Hello, welcome back. Last time I tried to fit everything together and thought I was almost done, but kind of had a crisis because nothing fit. Um, so I found ways to solve pretty much all of the problems that I was having then. Fortunately, it just took a little bit longer than I expected. Uh, here's one random thing that happened a while ago, but I just didn't happen to show. Um, so that was the LED without a lens. I bought these LED lens caps that just pop onto the top of them and are supposed to increase their viewing angle to 180 degrees. I figured it might be a good alternative to the piece of paper I tried a while ago uh, to diffuse the light. There's still a bright spot, but it's like halfway in between just the default LED and uh, the piece of paper, so I think it's, it's going to be acceptable like this. Uh, so this is how I'm leaving it for now, with just the LED lens. Turn off some lights so you can see it a little better. Yeah, bright spot's not too bad, it lights up the whole thing. Um, so that's how I'm running that for now. Alright, so, uh, to fix some of the problems I had, I took off all my stationary panels, because those all need to be repositioned and redrilled. I figured while I had them off, uh, it would make sense to do something about this countersinking problem that I'm having. So the solution I chose for that, I mentioned before, was to uh, put some adhesive between the metal and the wood, so that if they're just stuck together, um, the screws holding down the wood can also hold down the metal because there's adhesive holding the two of those together. This is also my last chance to clean the sawdust out from between the metal and wood because there still, still gets a little bit in there, and uh, these are going to be fused together after that. The particular adhesive I'm using here is called DAP Rapid Fuse. It smells and looks and acts pretty much like any super glue, um, but bonding metal to wood is one thing that, that is listed as, uh, as a thing that it can do, and I tested it and it seemed to work okay. So I'm putting a little circle around each screw hole, then just a big stripe in the middle. And hopefully that'll hold, hold these together reasonably well. So reseat that on there. Be careful to keep the orientation uh, the same. I'm, I flipped it over a very specific way so that I knew which side was up. Hold it on there for a while. Uh, after a little while, I uh, let's see. I try using my foot. That works okay. I, I just wasn't sure how to get enough pressure on it in all the places. One problem here was that the metal uh, kind of comes down a little farther on some sides than others. Like this doesn't quite lay flat in this orientation. Um, Eventually I realized what I should have done uh, was to actually flip the panel over and just hold it down like that, because that's an actual flat surface. Yep, that's what I should have done. So yeah, just continue with those. Um, some of the metal was a little bit stubborn in coming off the wood, and I needed to use a little bit of tool assistance to actually get it off. So same thing, just put it around the screw holes, put a big thing in the middle. Make sure you keep the orientation the same. Uh, this one I decided to lay the wood onto the metal instead, um, for some reason. Because that's the way up that I want it anyway. Hold that. Do again. Got to get through that whole pile. After doing a few of these, uh, I realized there's actually a better way to hold those two together uh, in order to let the glue do its stuff and bond. Um, I don't have to use my hands, I can use my feet. And then what's cool about this is it allows me, me to multitask, because I'm holding those together, but I can already start on the next one. And by the time I have the glue applied and have put the two pieces back together, uh, the other one will have set. All right, so um, I had already drilled holes for stationary panels before. That was part of my problem and part of the reason I was so unhappy last time. Because re-drilling holes um, directly next to other screw holes that are already there doesn't really work. I tried a few different strategies for... Um, for filling them to redrill, The one that seemed to work best was to use a really thin little dowel. That's an eighth inch dowel rod. Uh, I'm trimming it down. I realized I should hold the other end <laughs> so it doesn't fly around all over the place. So little bits of eighth inch dowel rod uh, get wood glue on them and then get hammered into place in my old screw holes. 
After that's done and the glue has set, I can drill in uh, right next to it, even if it's like just a millimeter away or something. That glue is almost empty. <laughs> I needed another bottle of that same stuff eventually. Yeah, so even if I'm like right next to the hole, if I want to move it just a, just a fraction of an inch or something, um, as long as this is in, then I can just re-drill in any position and it's no problem. Without this, if I try to re-drill ne right next to an existing hole, the drill bit just will insist on going into that hole and there's nothing I can do to stop it. But this is how I fill in holes for re-drilling. So do this a whole bunch of times for every screw hole that I drilled there, because I did drill in for the stationary panels on both both pads. So that was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, forty holes. So forty holes get refilled like this. Now this one behaves a little funny. As I'm hammering it in, it doesn't quite want to go in, and then it kind of bends and breaks. But what's nice about that is it actually broke off pretty clean, eventually. Yeah. So it breaks off pretty clean right there. That still works just fine, even though it doesn't go the full depth. Um, that's that's not a problem. It's it's enough of a enough of a plug to do the job just fine. Kind of makes a satisfying noise when when those are hammered in. <laughs> anyway, repeat that many times. So uh, let's work on some of the other problems here. My edge finish was way too close together and kind of just squished all the panels and arrows too tightly together so that they had no room to move around. So my solution for that is to use some of this extra scrap plywood. This is the same piece that I cut my corner stoppers out of. I had a huge sheet of it, so I figured I might as well do something with it. I'm going to use that to cut out some wood shims that are going to go on the inside of the edge finish to push it outward a little bit. Uh, I'm using a utility knife, as you've seen me do before. Uh, I'm doing more cuts with less pressure, which kind of works just as well and is a little less hard on the wrist. Um, so that just comes right apart. So that strip will be cut further down into uh, a few more pieces afterward. I need another one of the same size because I'm doing this to edge finish on both pads. I realize eventually that I don't actually have to cut all the way through. This doesn't have to be a super clean cut, um, so I just cut partially and then break it off. So then I cut those down a little farther into six pieces like that, and then four pieces that are a little bit smaller. That's just the way it worked out, because I'm putting those all the places where the screw holes are not. Uh, I'll just let the... I didn't feel like drilling new screw holes through those or anything. Um, so this just seemed to make the most sense. You'll see the layout in a moment. All right, so I've got my two outer pieces of edge finish for each pad here. Um, apply some wood glue, stick the shim in, hold it in place. You can see the screw holes. I'm dodging around them carefully. And I don't hold these in place for very long because I have plans to clamp them together all at once once I'm done. Um, since these are nice big flat shapes, uh, I can just glue both on, uh, and then flip one over, stick them together, and hold them that way. So I can save a little bit of time, because it takes so long to... Oh, yeah, that, that bottle of glue finally ran out. Fortunately, I had another. So I can save a little bit of time just because it takes so long to hold uh, glued pieces together. I really get very impatient about it. So those are all applied. Flip over carefully, because that, that glue is still very wet. Um, the pieces adhere well enough that I don't have to have to hold them as I flip it or anything, but I wanted to do it carefully anyway. And just sort of sit on it for a little while. Now, I did something silly here. The way I cut those pieces, <laughs> they go up too high, 
and they overlapped the area that I was trying to open up uh, with adding them to move the edge finish outward. So I just, once the glue had set a little bit, I get in there with the utility knife again and trim down the pieces that are above the, um, above the, the base of the pad. So once that cut is made, uh, I can use another knife just to pop the glue off a little bit and get that piece out of there as soon as it decides to cooperate. I want to hold down the, um, the lower portion because I don't want to pop that off and the glue is not like all the way set when I'm doing this. Um, but yeah, I didn't manage to rip off any of them all the way as I did this, just just the pieces I wanted. Then that kind of made a mess, so I cleaned it up with that. The inside of that, uh, the piece of the, the edge there did get uh, scuffed up a little bit by the utility knife, but I don't feel like it really matters. It can have a few gouges in it because it's not seen. So this is how that goes on. The outermost piece. Uh, the corner all the way in the back it doesn't really line up after this, but mm, it's a lot more important for the arrows to, uh, to fit in the layout. So I was fine with that. It's, it's only off by a fraction of an inch. In this position, it's a lot harder to put the edge finish back on because, um, well, because before I had gravity working, working with me, and now it's working against me. And I can't lay these on their side again, well, without doing a little bit of finagling because the, the interconnect is on that side now, so it doesn't lay flat unless I would tuck it in or something. And these are in their final positions anyway, so I didn't want to move them around. So I just sort of hold that piece up, make sure things are aligned, then if they're close enough for the screw to bite into its previous hole, it'll just realign itself after that. Do the familiar thing of getting the two farthest screws in first. This was an awkward spot to to get my drill into. I had a little bit of trouble. If I'm at a little bit of an angle, you could hear that it kind of slipping out of the screw head. Uh, if I'm at an angle, that tends to happen a lot. And it's hard not to be at an angle here. Anyway, so that's remounted with the shims in it. Uh, Eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that um, some of those are still too high. Uh, that's what it looks like. There's a little bit of gap in there. Um, it's fine. I don't mind too much. So I ended up actually taking that piece back off and trimming down all the rest of these because I wanted extra room for the stationary panels too, not just the arrow panel. <laughs> anyway, so I got that done before I mounted the other one. Now all of those are at the same height. So I put those on, both pads, refit all the stationary panels and arrows so that there's a little bit of room for all of them. And this is my first test since I've done that. So I just make sure I have this plugged in so you can see the lights. I uh, just walk across gently and see that every arrow can trigger and then untrigger. So nothing is, nothing is shoved together so close that it's stuck down. So that's great. Now I can re-drill all of my holes. And this should be the final position for these. Same process, drill one, screw in, drill the other, screw in, then I can drill the other two. Then repeat that exact process for every panel. All the while being sure I'm not shoving them up against the arrows in a way I don't want to. So this was kind of a delicate process, but yeah, with some care I got it done the right way. Screws are in. And player two pad, stationary panels are mounted, and hopefully their final positions. Player one, exact same thing. Holes drilled. Start all the screws. Uh, now wait a minute. I'm confused about something. Well, let's, let's see what happens later in the video. Um, is my footage out of order here? 
<laughs> well, anyway, those screws go in. And player one pad's done. The, uh, the glue on the metal is holding it down very nicely, so even the ones with the countersink problems uh, are working just fine. Yeah, didn't I already do this? Why do I have putting those screws in twice? Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Anyway, those are in. So, now that the aero panels are in place uh, with stationary panels mounted, I can finally actually work on doing this for real. I had some footage of doing this uh, back before I had make, made this adjustment to actually give these enough room, but it didn't make any sense to show that, so I'll do it better this time. So each one of those triangle bracket mounts needs to have a hole drilled and a screw mounted on it uh, to hold it in place. So the process is, um, right, so this is the first aero panel that I do here. I have the last one too, so you can see how the process changes when I show that. Um, anyway, so just take off each of those, mark out the hole where the, the center of that is. The center hole goes all the way through. Um, I want to carefully keep the triangle brackets paired with the things they mount to because I selected those carefully so that the, the screw holes would line up because some of those were different, and not all of them actually aligned in a way that would work. Um, so those are all in mated pairs, I just don't want to get confused and switch them by accident. Anyway, so you can see the circular mark I made there. That's where I'm going to drill in. I had the corner stoppers in here in addition to the sensors so that the arrow would be fully sitting on everything that's going to be in there. So those screws are a little bigger, These are those are number 10 metal screws, a um, bit larger than the number 8 wood screws that I've been using for everything else, like the stationary panels and stuff. So slightly lar larger drill bit, I forget the exact size. A um, little bit of an awkward place to drill into, the drill can't go all the way in, but it goes far enough. This was another one of those drill bits that stubbornly likes to screw itself in instead of just cutting a clean hole. For some reason, it's like only the 1 8 inch drill bit that doesn't do that. All the larger ones really love to. <laughs> so clean up sawdust. It's very important to have this all the way clean. So vacuum cleaner at the ready to, to vacuum all that out. Because I can't have any little bits of sawdust disrupting the the uh, the seating of the triangle bracket mount that I'm going to be screwing in there. So those are the screws, those are the washers. Uh, the way I spec'd out these pieces is that there's a hole of the same size that goes all the way through. <laughs> so I was thinking, uh, I need room for my screw head in the top, and yeah, I guess the hole goes all the way through, so that's where the screw goes through. Somehow I didn't think about the fact that if the screw hole, uh, screw head goes through the top, it would go through the bottom too. However, this actually turned out to be quite advantageous. I'm glad it happened to work out this way. So I put a washer in the inside to hold the screw head on the bottom hole. And what that allows me to do, uh, the, the reason I'm happy it worked out this way, is because once the screw is all the way in, I can loosen, up, loosen it up just a little bit and wiggle the, the piece around if it needs to move slightly. So the, the hole that gets drilled doesn't have to be absolutely precise. I get some wiggle room, I can loosen it up, move it around, tighten it down, and uh, and it's still perfectly tight, but just I, I get some adjustability, which turns out to be extremely important for uh, what I end up doing here. So that tightens all the way down. I was a little worried about having only one screw holding them in, but one was enough. I didn't need more, as it turned out. So insert washer, thread onto screw, tighten down, repeat same process. So all four of those are mounted. Corner stoppers go back in. They'll get glued down eventually. There's there's several steps of putting on and taking off the aero panel. 
Uh, this is a complicated process. So right here, it doesn't quite have enough room to go down all the way. So here's where that adjustability in those comes in that I was talking about. So I can unscrew those just slightly, then slide them outward so that the arrow panel has room to seat itself properly. It takes a few of those to actually uh, actually let it go down. Almost. And there we go. That's seated now, mostly. So I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with this just yet. So I, once I have the arrow panel seated, I just tighten those back up. Um, there's going to need to be another step to this. Uh, so I'm noticing right here that the those are not exactly level with the arrow panel. They're a little bit lower, which was another problem that I had, because when I pr put on the triangle brackets, they'll always hold the arrow panels down and just stick the sensors down. So I had to elevate the, uh, the mounts for them. Um, I'll get to that when I get to it. I guess I spec them just slightly too short for what I needed. So arrow panel comes off again. Corner stopper moves around. Um, what am I doing here? Oh yeah, so uh, I decide the way to elevate those is to shove a couple of washers down under them because those are about the right height to, uh, to move them up to where they need to be. Uh, for later ones of these, I realize it makes a lot more sense to put in the washers first rather than screw those down first and then just kind of tuck them inside, <laughs> uh, this ends up not being entirely level. So it angles itself upward. Um, basically, like, that corner that I'm screwing in leans down, then the rest lean up because because the washers are not... They're, they're only supporting the, the sort of outside edge of it. So uh, after this, I put in one on the bottom of the screw as well as on top of it. So there are three washers holding that thing up in three places. Not for this panel. I, I fix this one later, uh, but for this one I just have the, the two washers per, uh, per bracket holder. All tight. Arrow goes back in. Then reposition once more, Let's sort of snug them up against the, the panel. Because I was loosening and tightening those with it out of there. Um, I didn't know the exact position where these would need to be, and they need to be fairly exact, because the triangle brackets need to fit in between them and the arrow panel and everything else that's around them. Uh, and also, the screw holes need to line up in them. <laughs> So a lot of stuff needs to line up right there. This is one of the most precise parts of the pad. So those all kind of fit. That one wasn't super comfortable. So I decided to move that around a little bit to give it some more room. Still a little bit tight, but good enough. Stoppers. <laughs> I forgot a step. So take those back out. Take arrow off again. Corner stoppers need to be glued. Uh, I have the thing plugged in at this point so that I can see see it light up when it's down, so that I know I know if it's oversensitive or undersensitive, or if I have it uh, jammed down somehow. Those LEDs really came in handy because otherwise I would have to just look at a screen for an input test to see if the th thing was down or not. LED is very useful for that. So panel back on, brackets back on, screws go in. So 
So my hope right now is that I uh, the washers elevated those enough that that thing won't get stuck down when I tighten those fully. And as it turns out, that totally works. I can feel with my fingers like which is higher, the arrow panel or the. Right, no false positives. Yep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So that's the first arrow panel that I put together. And that's an arrow panel. Feels pretty good. Sensitivity right. uh, needs some tweaks. Except, one thing. Except I did still forget one more step. <laughs> so let's come back out again. The reason I don't glue the corner stoppers in place earlier is because the triangle bracket holders are moving around uh, and I don't know exactly where they're going to sit. So finally I can glue those once those are in their final resting positions. And then that'll finish up the first arrow panel. This is the player two up arrow, by the way. It happened to be the closest one, so that's why I did it first. I'm trying to multitask here because I'm holding that one in place to, uh, to let the glue set, and I do the other one with my other hand. It works okay. For later ones of these, I realize I don't actually need to hold those in place to set the glue because the arrow panel will do it on its own if I uh, put it on and screw it in right after this. So that's the way I do the rest of those. All right, finally that can go in and not have to come out again until I'm ready to adjust sensitivity. <laughs> so at this point I have the player two pad. Uh, I, I did that for the other three panels in player two. Um, two of them are locked down, as you can see by the LEDs that are constantly lit. Uh, this one has, let's see, that's the up arrow that I was just showing. Uh, the sensitivity is kind of okay on it. Um, that one was extremely sensitive on that side and was actually, uh, jammed down too, but then I, I messed with it a little bit and it, it fixed itself. Uh, but that one's going to need some tweaks. I guess I don't, I didn't get footage for all of the sensitivity adjustments that I did. Um... They involved a variety of things. I, th I think I get, I think I get most of the gist of it here at least. So that screw um, is what uh, right. Yeah, it comes down to one screw uh, whether that's held down or not. Um, this one, however, has a different problem. So I actually have like several different problems exhibited here. I have some undersensitive stuff, some oversensitive stuff. Uh, brackets holding arrows down and something else going on. So at any moment here I'm expecting one of these screws that I'm undoing to uh, to stop the LED from shining, but none of them actually do. Because there's a different problem going on in here. So I get all those off, open it up to see what's happening. Even with the panel off, the light is still lit. So what this means is one of my sensor brackets is locked down. It's that one, the far one. Uh, so this is, it wouldn't re-stick, but I saw it uh, sticking. I couldn't get it to do it a second time, but I knew which one it was and I knew how to fix it. So same process that I went through for these the first time. Some of them didn't get filed down quite enough, apparently. There was a second one that I had to do after this. Um, just two out of 32 uh, wasn't too bad a, too bad a record. All the others have been working so far, at least. Spoilers, I get the pad working in this video. <laughs> uh, so, uh, right, lubricate, re-lubricate that, put it back in. This little screwdriver in this space is really awkward because I keep 
bumping the LED with it, because it's right there in the middle. That still didn't feel super great, but the thing, the thing about this is when I first put all three screws in, uh, those can be a little bit tight sometimes. But what I can do is I can just loosen them up a tiny bit and retighten to sort of reseat the spacers and the screws, and then that loosens up the entire sensor bracket. So like I'll screw all three in, in at once, observe that it's tight, loosen and tight, retighten each one, and then it's totally fine. Because like one will seat just slightly too far out or something, but it's, it's within its parameters to be able to uh, move up and down freely like that if I just reseat it. And there we go. So one problem is solved, but there are more with the same arrow. So this is the arrow that had the, had the stuck sensor bracket. Uh, I'm putting back in the screws, but then I discover that those particular ones uh, hold down the arrow if they're too tight. And that's super sensitive on that side, like I just, just the lightest touch will trigger it at, at this tightness. And very undersensitive on some of the other sides. Like that one I could barely get to trigger at all. So take it back apart. Uh, this is something that happens in real arcades. Um, DDR and in the groove machines, um, this is apparently a common trick. You use an index card or a business card or some other just rigid piece of paper. Cut it, fold it over, and stick it right under the sensor so that it gives it just a tiny little bit of elevation to increase pressure against the arrow panel. So I do two of those in the top and bottom sensors. You could fold this multiple times, or double up the paper, or just have one piece of paper if you only need a tiny little tweak. There's a lot of flexibility in, in uh, how to adjust sensitivity using those. So increasing sensitivity is actually a lot easier than decreasing it. I need to decrease sensitivity on the outermost sensor. So the way I decide to try to do that is to double up the, uh, the foam padding on the corner stoppers. So I cut another piece that's roughly the same as those, put the double-sided tape on it, peel off the thing, which always takes a moment, and stick it to the corner stopper. So that'll give the arrow panel uh, something else to sit on at that side that's not the um, just the sensor bracket, which is held down a little, a little bit too hard. Another thing I ended up doing later that I never show here uh, is that some of the triangle bracket mounts needed to be elevated a little bit more uh, than just the one, the, the the three washers that I put in put under them. Wow, talking is hard. <laughs> then just the three washers uh, elevated them as they were. So I I actually doubled up the washers on a couple of them. So now that one's super hard to, to press. The other two feel like they still need a little bit more tweaking. Now what I'm doing here is not the smartest move, as I learned later. Uh, I did not put on the triangle brackets to see um, how it felt with everything screwed down, because everything changes a lot once you do that. Because that padding that I just, the double padding I installed on the corner stoppers will have compressed down a lot. Um, so I add another folded piece of paper to the top of the sensor this time. And I do the same for the other one. Because those still didn't feel sensitive enough. Oh wait, no I don't. I do it for this one all the way back here because I thought I had gone way undersensitive with that, because I could barely press it down uh, without the, with, with the arrow panel on there. Let's see, right, so I just do a single... Oh no, I do fold that, yep. Fold that up, put it under the sensor bracket. I think those two actually stay in there. Uh, but there's something a little wrong with what I'm doing with the far sensor there. Because that was the oversensitive one. I don't want to in increase its sensitivity. 
but it felt like I did when I had the arrow like this. Still feels undersensitive. That's because there's so much padding in the way of that actually pressing down. So put those back on, and I have the problem of that lighting up again when they're tightened down too much. So I realize, okay, that was silly. <laughs> I shouldn't have put that piece of paper in there. So I take it back out, take out that piece of paper, because that one did not belong. The whole point was to decrease the sensitivity of that. Because again, everything changes with the brackets all tightened down. It does not feel the same at all if, they're, if the arrow panel is just resting on there like that. So now I can tighten it all the way down, press each side, Perfect. and it works. Perfect. So now this is the player one pad. I've done the three other arrows, then the, the I've done the up, right, and down arrow. I'm doing the left arrow. This is the final one that I need to do for, for this process, for drilling in, for the triangle bracket mount, gluing on the corner stoppers and everything, so you can see how the process has changed. So I take out the screws, but leave the triangle brackets on. Uh, leave them on as much as possible for this process. Just mark out with a pencil where those holes go. So that's largely the same. I'm trying to be careful about how I take those on, take those off, because I don't want the pieces under them to move around too much. I want to keep their alignment with the, the screw holes so that I can actually, you know, screw those in. Um, and put the put the drilled hole as close to center for that as possible. Now it's still going to have to wiggle around a little bit, but I want to be sure I have the room to wiggle in the in the right direction. So I get it as dead center as I can with this. Keeping the other brackets on makes sure that the entire panel isn't going to shift around in a way that doesn't make sense. Um, so yeah, other three make sure that that is about in the place that it will be with all four on. So then those come off. Panel comes out. Corner stopper come out. Bracket mounts come out. go somewhere, keep their orientation carefully so I don't get them mixed up. Pre-drill. I have my back to a wall right there. I'm kind of at an awkward angle. There's not a whole lot of room. That's why I'm sitting a little bit weird. So drill that in. Clean up the sawdust. Got to be very clean. All, right. All that's gone. Nice and clean. I can do the rest of my work. So corner stoppers would go back on. Panel goes back on. Now how does this work? What am I... Wait, what's the point of what I'm doing here? Oh, right. Um, I'm checking the levels of the, the relative height of those things with the arrow panel. Because uh, I need to know how much I need to elevate them with the washers. Because some are different. Some need a thinner washer in there. Some need double washers. Those were all normal height. Like, they were exactly the amount that needs to be elevated by one of these particular washers. Speaking of those particular washers, I ran out right, right around there. Fortunately, I had another box of the same stuff. So lay out the washers first before actually screwing any of those in. Uh, that's what it'll be resting on. The center one goes right through the screw hole. The outer two just provide some extra elevation to the, the rest of it. So put washer into bracket, thread screw through, and then get the screwdriver in there before I put it in. 
so that I can start screwing into the hole immediately. For all of these, I tighten it down all the way, then loosen it just slightly, so it maintains a little bit of wiggle room, but is almost all the way tight down. You can see the final turn goes the other direction, just a little bit. So those can still wiggle which gives enough flexibility for the aero panel to fit in there. So triangle brackets go on. So when I'm looking at this, I'm making a note of the screw hole positions and just sort of in my head thinking, okay, so where do I need to move the piece under there to get the screw holes lined up? Um, sometimes it's a little bit inward, sometimes it's outward, sometimes it's left, or right, or front, or back. So I just slide it around a little bit, tighten the thing down, and then test to see how close I was because I can't get at that screw with a triangle bracket on. That's kind of the, the whole point of the thing. That was too tight against the, uh, the stuff to its right, so I had to give it a little bit more room. So the, the concerns are screw hole alignment and also being too close to other stuff around it. So I have to compromise between those two sometimes just so that screws can still go in somehow, but things are not, not locked together. There we go. That goes in nice and clean. And at this point, I put in the screws just a little bit, um, just to hold those in place as I do the other three the same way. So check screw alignment, take it off, and move that around the way it needs to go. I normally didn't have as much trouble as I had with this arrow with uh, the surrounding space. That was too close to the edge finish. The bracket did not fit in, so I had to move it inward a little bit more again. But yeah, that's, that is definitely a concern. Still wouldn't go in. Gotta move a little farther, just tiny fractions of an inch. Can't even really see it moving, but I'm, I am moving it slightly each time I loosen and retighten it. And there we go. Two screws in, just a couple of hand turns. And same process for those other two. Those come back out again. Now that I have them aligned properly, those are tightened down. I have some other business in here. So corner stoppers get glued on. You'll notice there are fewer, uh, fewer iterations of putting the arrow in and taking it back out uh, with this process. So I streamlined it a little bit since the, the first one of these that I did. So again, I didn't really hold those on for very long because the aero panel itself can clamp them down. So inside of that is done. Those can go back on and stay on until I'm ready to adjust the sensitivity at least. So that's for mounting the basic pieces. Now that that's done, assuming that this these all screw down without holding the thing, which they do, then I can worry about adjusting sensitivity. For each arrow, this process took about 40 minutes, and there wasn't much I could do to speed it up. So this was a this was quite lengthy for both uh, both pads. So under sensitive on the inner sensor, the most important one. Yep. So I need to increase right and front basically from this perspective. I happen to have a couple of 
pre-cut pieces of paper from a previous one. And they fit in exactly where they needed to go. Feels good enough. Probably could be improved further. I think. As long as that works well. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, as long as the inner sensor is working. Whoops. <laughs> so all the arrows are on. I'm basically ready to play at this point. So uh, I've changed clothes. I, um, I need to do a few last things just to get them all the way ready. Uh, so I'm tucking in the interconnect into the player one pad so that I can shove them all the way together. So that's where it sits. I'll, when I take these apart, I'm going to have to do it very carefully and just pull that out of there without, without ripping out any wires. Um, I have not done that yet, so hopefully that works. Alright, with those together, I can install the frame joint bracket to hold the pads together. This is kind of a semi-optional piece. Some people run without it. Oh, um, I'm dumb. <laughs> I put those in without realizing that I needed to put the washers in, too. <laughs> so I had to redo all of those. I forgot the washers. So the eight bolts go in. Hand tighten as far as I can hand tighten them. Then get a wrench to do the rest. So that was the front. Same thing happens in the back. In a smaller, more awkward space. I remember the washers this time. So bars are going to get mounted too. Uh, easiest thing to do is to put them onto the bracket before putting that into the pads, so that's what I'm doing here. Slide it on. And put in the screws. Four of them per bar. That one can just be hand tightened all the way since it doesn't actually connect to anything at the back until I get the four nuts that pair with them. So I have a socket wrench there for screwing in the nuts. And I also have a screwdriver for holding the Phillips head screws in place while I do that. So both of those just sort of tighten together uh, to hold the thing in place. I mentioned before it would have made more sense to just have those uh, as untapped holes. Just stick a bolt through and hold it in place with a nut. But I had tapped holes all the way through the, the, um, the bracket. so. So that's the way that worked out. Alright, so with the bar on, that goes in place. Those just get pushed through the holes in the wood to the bottom. <laughs> Once again, I forget that I need to put washers in first. When those are seated all the way down, I can push them back up from the bottom. So washers actually go on. Push in again. So longer bolts for those pieces because those intersect uh, part of the frame. Shorter bolts for the outer ones that are just through the base plate. That center hole doesn't go to anything. I thought I might put an extra piece there, but I didn't. <laughs> so it's basically there for mimicry to look like a uh, pump it up or DDR bracket that would go here. <laughs> Does not serve any function other than that. So I'm putting on washers and nuts in the bottom. You can't really see what I'm doing until I move the camera onto the floor. So this was awkward and hard to do. <laughs> Just gotta feel my way through. I can kinda sorta see, but not very well. So put washer on there, hand tighten nut. I didn't get any footage of it, but I also came in here again with a wrench to, uh, to tighten them down the rest of the way. I held an adjustable wrench up top on the one the uh, 
hex heads of the, the bolts and just use your wrench to tighten those. So at this point, this is ready I to play. Much slower scroll speed than double. So here we go. I did a Twitch stream as soon as I had this all working, and everything was super awesome. Like, I need to do a little bit more sensitivity tweaking, but the pads really performed like a champ. It felt awesome, it sounded awesome, I really like the way it sounds when I stomp on it. It does make a little bit of a sort of dead wood stomping sound, more than the kind of metallic clang that uh, arcade pads have just a little bit, which I predicted, but it's fine. I was exhausted from destructing these, so I don't... I didn't play extremely well that day. <laughs> I'm playing a 10 here. I played mostly 9s, and even those I had a lot of trouble handling, because I'm just not used to moving the way that I do in double mode, because I had not played it in so many years. But it was super awesome to do it again. So yay, I can finally play on these! That was super satisfying. There are still a bunch more pieces that still need to go on. You can see that there's just kind of holes in the back where the bars are, and uh, missing some metal pieces on the front and the sides. I'll be putting those on in a future video, and uh, I also need to do a cost breakdown of everything. That'll all happen. Some more sensitivity tweaks. But yeah, like this is performing extremely well as it is. Yeah, this is awesome. So I'm super happy with how this turned out, uh, especially after all the terrible despair that ha that occurred last time. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you next time for some finishing touches. I'll be streaming this uh, frequently, I'm sure. And yeah, uh, I'll see you then.